In this example here, we have an enzyme, enzyme E, and it converts a substrate into a product. And what we want to do in this example here is we want to figure out what are the enzyme parameters, namely Vmax and Km, for this enzyme reaction. And uh, we would usually use a set of experiments where we have different substrate concentrations and then we measure the corresponding initial rates. But in this experiment here, we've only got two values. We only have two substrate concentrations and we measure the initial uh, rate this, that corresponds to this. Now, uh, I would, in practice, I would not do an experiment like that, but we can try to figure out how the parameters Km and Vmax are roughly located uh, just simply by using the michaelis menten equation. This is a method that is known as the linear transformation method and it's based on uh, what um, Cornish, Bowden and Eisenthal published in the 1950s, 1960s, which is basically another way how to plot enzyme data, which does not rely on a curve, but is a series of direct linear plots. And that's what this method is actually uh, all about. So how can we uh, how can we deal with that? First of all, let's just simply write down the michaelis menten equation. So the rate of a reaction, the initial rate, equals Vmax times the substrate concentration uh, divided by Km plus the substrate concentration. That is our general michaelis menten equation. And now uh, what we would usually do is we change the substrate concentration uh, and we get uh, changes initial rate. And then we would do some transformations, but we can also do a pure calculation. So how can we do that? Well, we can uh, actually say that in the first place, when, when we look at that, we have two uh, unknowns in it, Vmax and Km, but we've got only one equation. But we've got, we can convert that into two equations. So we can say our first initial rate, let's call that V1, equals Vmax times S1, and I don't write the, uh, the concentration bracket, uh, it is just uh, for convenience, divided by Km plus S1. So that would be our first reaction that we are looking at here. And it would define Vmax over Km. But that's just one equation and we can't solve a system with two unknowns with one equation. But we can write exactly the same thing for the second reaction. We can write it as V2, the initial rate for 2, equals Vmax times S2 divided by Km plus S2. And should it be Vmax 1 and Km 1 on Vmax 2 and Km 2? No, actually not, because an enzyme can only have one Vmax for whatever reaction we are dealing with. So now we have two equations with two unknowns and we should be able to solve that. So what we can do is, for example, we can use the substitution method. So we can, uh, for example, solve for Vmax here. So the way would, we would deal with that is we would bring this one here to that side. So we would have V1 Km plus S1. This gives us Vmax times S1. And therefore for Vmax, we would just simply divide that by S1. So we would get V1, we have Km plus S1 divided 
by S1. And we can do that uh, the same uh, for uh, this second equation here. Let's do that step by step. V2 Km plus S2 equals Vmax S2. And we bring, so that is equivalent to what we had here. And for our Vmax, we would get here, we bring that to the other side, we have V2 times Km plus S2 over S2. And now we know that these two Vmax must be the same because an enzyme can only have one Vmax. So we basically have one equation with just one unknown and we can solve this for Km. So how can we do that? We just uh, write this as V1 over S, Km plus S. So we can multiply V1 over S1. Let me just simply write it in a slightly different form. Km plus S1 equals V2 over S2 Km plus S2. And we just multiply these terms into the brackets. So we would get V1 over S1 times Km plus V1 over S1 times S1. We see the S1 cancels out equals V2 over S2 Km. We multiply that again into the bracket plus V2 over S2 times S2. And again, the S2 cancels out. So what have we got? We've got V1 over S1 Km plus V1 equals V2 over S2 Km plus V2. So we bring everything with Km to one side. So everything with Km to one side, everything that's not V, uh, that's not, it's not Km to the other side. And we get V1 over S1 Km minus V2 over S2 Km equals, what have we got on that side? We've got V2 minus V1. Okay, so what can we do with that? Now we can factor out here, we just simply factor out Km and we get for our Km Km equals V1 over S1 minus V2 over S2. And that is equal to V2 minus V1. And now we have a nice equation for Km because we can bring that to the other side. So Km equals V2 minus V1 divided by this expression here in the bracket, V1 over S1 minus V2 over S2. So that's a nice equation here. And uh, we can just start now putting in the numbers that we used here. So for our V2, that's our second initial rate. So here this would be V1, this would be V2, that is S1 and that is S2. So for our second initial rate here, we've got 65 minus the first one, that is 16 
divided by, what have we got? We've got V1, that is 16 divided by S1, and that was 10, minus, now we've got V2, that is 65, divided by 141 in this case. And uh, when we put this into a calculator, we obviously need a little bit of uh, rounding then uh, with this result. So I do that with my calculator and I get 44. So let's have a quick look at the units. So here we've got the units of the uh, rate that would be micromolar per minute for both. And here we've got micromolar per minute. That's for the rate divided by micromolar. That is the unit for this, for the substrate concentration. And we see micromolar, micromolar cancel, micromolar per minute, micromolar per minute cancels out. And we have one, so we would have one over one over minute over micromolar and that would give us the unit of 44 micromolar and that of course makes sense in this case because we have um, a km which has the same unit as the substrate concentrations so that is our km here and now we can use this km to uh, calculate our Vmax and it doesn't really matter which one we use. We can use this equation here for Vmax and put in uh, the Km that we just calculated. So we can do Vmax equals, so here we've got V1 that is 16 over the substrate concentration, S1, that's 10. And we multiply that with the Km, which we just calculated, which is 44, plus the S1 here, and that would be 10. And in terms of units, we have here micromolar, per minute. Uh, here we've got micromolar and here we've got also the unit of micromolar. So the units would be in micromolar per minute, which makes sense because that is the same as our initial rate. And if we put that into a calculator, we get a Vmax of roughly around 85 micromolar per minute. Um, for our reaction. And in a way, if we look at it, it makes sense because our Vmax is larger than the last point. And we could, with two points, we can't really make a good estimate uh, what the Vmax would be just by looking at the data. But this method here gives a very nice way of trying to find out an estimate for the uh, uh, for the two parameters and uh, what we can uh, really nicely do is we can use this equation here for the Km and we can also use this equation here for the Vmax to uh, calculate the Km and the Vmax value. So uh, this is an uh, incredibly useful method in the lab when you don't have time to do a lot of graphing, uh, to just simply quick and dirty check out what is roughly the Km. If you want to have a more accurate way of dealing with that, of course you would do more of these uh, substrate concentrations and measure more initial rates. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.